All right, welcome to the StriveScan College launch. We're so excited to have you guys participating in this event tonight. We have some fantastic schools here with us uh, to share more about their arts program specifically. Um, how this will work is each school will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but they'll be around for the entire session to answer your questions. Uh, my name is Monica and I'll be your facilitator tonight and I'm just going to go through a few quick housekeeping reminders before we get started. First, uh, your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you, um, but we strongly encourage you to use that Q&A button on your screen to submit questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many awesome uh, sessions that we have happening, especially in the next couple of weeks and through May. Um, so please be sure to check those out on our website at strivescan.com launch. You'll be able to see recordings of past sessions as well as um, upcoming sessions that you can sign up for. Um, I would now like to turn it over to our very first presenters. And that is, sorry, Western Colorado University. Perfect. Thank you so much, Monica. Hello, everybody. Um, hello, my name is Alejandro Alejandro. I'm a regional director of recruitment for Western Colorado University. Western Colorado University is a four-year public liberal arts institution that's located in the hearts of the Rocky Mountain. Just to give a little perspective of where we're located, we're located kind of like in the southwest corner of Colorado, about three and a half, four hours south of Denver. We're in a very neat location. I think it's like a hidden gem um, where if you're big into the outdoors, I think it's a perfect location, uh, especially if you're big into skiing, snowboarding. We do have Mount Crestview, Monarch Mountain. We have Harmons, which is about five miles south of town. It is the largest outdoor recreational area in Colorado. It's over 8,000 acres. And we also have Blue Mesa, which is about 10 miles west of town. It is the largest body of water in Colorado. It's over 20 miles long. And that's where your water activities most likely take place, students. Uh, so like I said, we're in a very lean location in a way, kind of your, all your, your Colorado things to do. Uh, we There's always something going on, not just off campus, but also on campus. We do have over 50 clubs and organizations. You have your academic clubs that run in conjunction with an academic program, like let's say like your psychology club, sociology club, your theater club, and then you have your passionate and interest club, which I would say those are pretty explanatory. Uh, what we also do have is athletics. We do compete in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference at the Division II level. Um, some of those, we also do have mountain sports and club sports, and as well as intramural sports. Regardless if you go to Western or you go somewhere else, Something I do recommend is make sure you get involved with clubs and organizations and intramural sports. It's going to enrich your college experience. Now, as I mentioned, we are a four-year public liberal arts institution. What that means, two years of gen eds is required, required general education courses. Um, those courses, in case you're still on the fence of what you want to study, I would definitely recommend taking those so just because it's going to help you explore areas that you not might even know you're interested in before you commit to a program or a double major major. Um, but some of the art programs that we have um, will be art. We have a, a major in art, history, and theory, a graphic design, K-12, literature, uh, study arts. Um, we also have communications arts as well. And we also have a bachelor's of fine arts. Um, and we also have an accelerated program where you receive your bachelor's and your master's in, in five years. And that's going to be a master's in gallery and museum management. Uh, those three plus two programs, like I said, you receive your bachelor's and your master's in five years. It's not just going to save you time, but also money because it's going it, it, to the fourth year financial aid will apply to your first year, your master's. In case you do change your mind, though, we do have a little bit of everything from biology to computer science, mechanical engineering, wildlife biology, environmental accessibility. Uh, we are a small institution, about 3,400 students. Average class size is 16. Those general education classes, I'll be honest, they do tend to be about 25 students, but once you move up to your division courses, they do tend to get smaller. 71% uh, of the classes are taught by a full-time professor and 69% of those professors have tournament degrees. Meaning that you're getting taught from someone you can say it's an expert in their field and someone that's fully dedicated to education, which leads me to my next thing. We are fully dedicated to your success. Uh, you'll be assigned an academic 
advisor, the academic advisor who got you from your first year to your last year at Western. We also have other resources like your math and writing center in case you need additional assistance, disability service in case you need a, a certain resource to be thriving on our campus. Uh, like I said, your success is definitely our first priority. Tuition cost is definitely below the national average for in-state and out-of-state. To 80% uh, of the students receive some type of aid and 100% of them consider for some um, for merit aid. Our merit scholarships are upon acceptance and they go up your GPA. That Those scholarships do range from 25 to 45 for in-state, eight to 10,000 for out-of-state. We are test optional one and four, so we don't need those test scores for admissions or scholarship purposes. Uh, now, out-of-state students, if you're uh, come from out of state. If you're under the WUI or the central place, you'll be able to pay 150% of Western insect tuition, which is going to be semi new, about $4,100. You can now stack them together, the mayor's scholarship and the discount program. Obviously, if you get awarded the mayor's scholarship, we'll automatically award you with that. That's just because you'll receive more money than, uh, than you will with the discount program. Uh, you can go to western.edu forward slash cost to see all the scholarships that we offer on our campus. Uh, how to apply, pretty simple. You can apply to the Western application or, or the common scholar, the common application. Regardless how you apply, we'll need your um, high school transcript. And now, if you apply to the Western application, you can, um, there's gonna be an application fee at $30. Reach out to your admissions office and we'll be happy to provide that code to waive that fee. The 50 percentile of students get admitted to West and have a 3.1 to 3.9 GPA. So you're below that range. One of the things I highly recommend is submitting any material that will help support your application, whether that's a white Western essay, personal statements, letter recommendations, resumes, whatever it might be. Definitely submit that. We'll look at everything you provide for us. The last thing that I do have is come and visit us. Uh, we have daily visits that run Monday through Friday and Saturday our prime request. Those include an information session, a campus tour, and then an optional meeting with a professor, coach, student, whoever it might be. Um, you can book those at western.edu forward slash visits. Now, if you can't make it on campus, that's totally understandable. You can stay tuned to our virtual events and you can go to western.edu forward slash recruitment events to see any of the upcoming events that we have going on campus. But I would definitely recommend coming and visiting, visiting and just getting a better, getting a better glimpse of Western. Um, here's my contact information on this slide, as well as the admissions office. If there's anything we can help with, um, whether that's like tending West or whatever it might be, please let us know. But thank you so much for, for, um, for your time. Thank you. And next up we have St. Mary's College of California. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kirsten Colty and I am one of the admissions counselors here at St. Mary's College of California. Um, I am also a double alum of the college, meaning I went here for both my undergraduate as well as my graduate degree. I've also included a timer just so that I can be cognizant of other panelists' time. Here at St. Mary's, we're located in Moraga, California, the heart of the Bay Area. We are a 15-minute drive with traffic from Oakland, 25 to Berkeley, and with traffic about 45 minutes from San Francisco. We are a private Catholic Lasallian liberal arts institution. I am aware that that is sort of a word salad. So if you happen to not know what a uh, Lasallian school is, we are affiliated with St. John Baptiste de La Salle of France. We appropriate a lot of his teachings in our own work here, meaning we are very social justice centered and we are very heavy into liberal arts. Your voice as a student here matters. I can attest to this as a, as a former student of the college myself. So we might be a really good fit for a student who is looking to get involved, but maybe you're apprehensive or a little shy and you're just not sure what club or organization that you would like to join. We can definitely help with that. We are NCAA Division I. We're best known for our men's and women's basketball teams, as well as men's rugby, which although it is a club sport, we are ranked number two in the nation currently. Um, we also have very small class sizes with about 19 students per faculty member. One stat I wanted to point out very quickly on this slide is I also fall in the statistic too. 31% of our total student body is the first person 
in their family to ever go to college. So just know if that pertains to you, there are definite academic, financial, and scholarship options available for you. They definitely helped me. Part of your curriculum here as a liberal arts institution is finding your voice. And in order to do so, you're going to be in seminar. There's a class called Collegiate Seminar or Seminar for short, and all students, regardless of your major, you take it once per academic year. The whole point of seminar is to dissect the human condition, to kind of brush up on your critical thinking, but also your active listening skills. Active listening skills are actually very valued right now in the workplace. And they're a great advantage to kind of brush up on. Many works that you'll be analyzing are from social justice um, advocates and icons, as well as um, revolutionary thinkers and writers. You'll go through all the ages, pretty much BC to AD. Um, we also offer a very unique course selection um, called January term. This occurs once a year in the month of January, as you can probably guess from the title. And the whole point of this coursework is to amalgamize your organic interests with um, interests that are academic in nature, meaning you're getting college credit for doing something actually fun. For example, one of the courses I took was a Harry Potter course. Another was a video game writing course. So if any of the, that um, kind of interests you, we might be a good fit as well. Very quickly, this is a brief snapshot of the kinds of majors we offer here at SMC. But if you look at this list and you go, oh no, the one major I wanted to do is not on here. You can always propose your own major. Regardless of your major, every single student here has the same academic counselor, all four of their years here. And you will also have a faculty advisor contingent upon your chosen major. Very briefly, this is kind of a um, snapshot of the cost of attendance that one can expect here at SMC. Um, what's very funny, and um, I kind of include this in a lot of my presentations, is there's something in higher education sometimes called sticker price or value price. I've sometimes heard it called. Sticker price literally means what you see on a sticker. It, that is not including loans, scholarships, aid. It just including uh, loans and need-based aid, the average financial aid package for our students was about $38,000, $38, which roughly shaves off about half the cost of attendance already. But what that doesn't account for, in addition to that, is the merit-based scholarships we offer. The minimum for a first year that you can earn is $13,000. The maximum is $29,000. Thousand contingent upon your weighted academic GPA at the time of admission. Because I am running low on time, I will skip ahead to kind of um, first year application things to kind of keep in mind. This also can pertain to you if you are a transfer student, as we are on both the coalition application as well as the common application. For both first years and transfers, we do require one letter of recommendation that must be academic in nature as well as transcripts. Thankfully, we are test optional just for you know, about 10 seconds. Uh, we very often get asked who hires our students. We have lots of students that currently work at Google, uh, especially and the Oakland A's. <laughs> very quickly, this is a brief snapshot of our contact information and I will be putting it in the chat as well. I will also be including um, our links to register for a virtual or in-person tour. Thank you all so much and perfect. I'm ready to hand it off to the next folks. Thank you very much. And it looks like our next presenter is Colorado State University Pueblo. Hello, my name is Shannon and I am an admissions counselor at Colorado State University Pueblo. And I'm just gonna take you through a quick general admissions presentation. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but I'll go ahead and get started. So um, CSU Pueblo is located about an hour and 45 minutes um, south of Denver. 
Um, our campus is actually located on the northeast side of Pueblo. We see about 300 plus days of sunshine and we're about 45 minutes from the mountains and San Isabel National Forest. You have Bishop's Castle out there as well. So a lot of different things to do around in the area. Um, our campus is a little bit smaller. We have about 4,000 students located here on campus as well, um, meaning that we have about 16 students per class size. 40% of our student, students are first generation, meaning that neither parent graduated with a bachelor's degree. And then also 50% of our students um, report from a diverse background. We are an HSI, a Hispanic serving institute as well. I believe around 33% of our students are Hispanic. And then we also are Colorado's first Purple Heart designated campus, so we are very proud of that as well. Next, we have some different athletics. We are an NCAA Division II school. We compete in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Um, we also have 21 sports, 11 for our women, 10 for our men. We also have 22 club and intramural sports. Um, so that's just basically if you don't want to necessarily compete at uh, the Division II level, maybe have a little bit more fun with your friends and your peers, definitely recommend doing intramural sports. Next, we have our um, different clubs and organizations here on campus. We have about 75 plus, um, depending on whether that's under academic, social, religious, multicultural. We also have our Outdoor Pursuits program, which is pretty popular. We also have our soror sorority and fraternity life, our ASG program, Rec Center, of course, is located here on campus. And then also this is all through our student engagement and leadership. So basically they just put on all of the different events here on campus. Um, our PAC Fest, which is held at the beginning of the year, kind of gives you a great opportunity to meet different people here on campus. So you kind of get those jitters out, um, different concerts. We had Polly, Polly D come out one day, uh, one year, and so I think the students really enjoy that. Next, we have residence life and housing. We have three different residence halls, two for our freshmen, Creston and Calibra, and then Greenhorn is for our upperclassmen. Um, and then we also have walking six apartments, which is right next to our residence halls as well. It's right down the way. Um, we do have a two year living on campus requirement if you're within the 50 mile radius of our university. And then we also do have seven different dining options on campus. We have a couple different um, Starbucks. We have Einstein bagels, Tacos Navarros, as well as our Pat Calf. And that all is dependent on whether or not you really wanna eat on campus. Next over here, you'll kind of see, we have our cost of, of attendance um, for our Colorado residents, our Ruby residents, and then Thunder Wolf residents as well. For a Colorado resident, you're looking at about 21,000. And for a Wooey and Thunder Wolf resident, you're looking at about 27,600. Um, as far as tuition and fees, that's based off of 15 credits per semester, so 30 for the year. And then also housing and meals is also dependent on um, whether or not you get the standard room, which is you and a roommate, and then you're gonna share a bathroom with two other suite mates. Um, and then also how often you feel like you're gonna eat at the Pat Calf. We have options of 12, 14, or 17 meals. Um, per week, or you can do unlimited as well. I know some athletes like to eat a little bit more. Next, we have our merit scholarships. And these are based off of, right when you apply to the university, it's gonna be based off of your GPA, class rank, ACT or SAT score, just one of the three, whichever rank ranks you the highest. Um, and these merit scholarships are renewable up to four years, as long as you maintain a 3.0 GPA here at the university. And then just kind of some general information about our Department of Art and Creative Media. Um, we have a couple different academic programs, as you can see off to the left, Art and Creative Media, Media as a Bachelor of Arts and Minor, um, Art and Creative Media, Media Concentration, um, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Art and Art and Education, K-12 Concentration, so just some different um, fields of study, museum studies, as well as a minor. And then just some mission and goals off to the right, what we're trying to serve for our students. We're really just trying to prepare you um, for practices of studio art, creative media, art history, and art education. One really great opportunity that we offer here is the agency, and it's just an organization of faculty mentored students from multiple disciplines engaged in creative industry practice, working directly with the community, nonprofits, small businesses and civic groups as well. So really just giving you the opportunity to have that hands-on experience as well. Um, lastly, just 
wanting you guys to visit campus, especially if you haven't seen it before. Um, if you were to go to our visitor center, center website, um, you can take an in-person campus, schedule that. What that'll look like is obviously you'll go on the tour, see campus, and then you'll also be able to meet with an admissions counselor, a faculty member, financial aid. Um, if you're interested in sports, you can meet with a coach. It's really a great opportunity. Maybe you're from outside of Colorado or even just far away, don't make, wanna make the trip down. We also have the option to visit campus and take a virtual campus tour as well. Um, so you can just scan that QR code and it'll take you directly there. Um, and then lastly, here's just my contact information. Um, again, my email, my work cell phone number is on there as well. And then if you just would like to keep up to date with um, us, you can follow us at PAC Admissions uh, on our Instagram and Facebook page. And that'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. And next up, we have Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. Excellent. Thank you, Monica. All right. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Juliette, Admissions Outreach Counselor Lead for Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, also known as REMCAD. I have the privilege to tell you about this one-of-a-kind small-sized institution located in Denver, Colorado, with both online and on-campus programming. If you're artistically inclined, an education at Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design will help bring your creativity to life. The small class sizes will give you the opportunity to grow into the individual you dream of becoming because our amazing professors are real artists and designers who work in their industries and they will have more time to work with you so they could mentor you and network with you. REMCAD is the premier art and, art and design college in Colorado and the campus is actually on the National Registry of Historic Places which adds to the experience. It was established in 1963 and our diverse student body was founded on something more than academic excellence. Creative minds take root here for the relentless student support, innovation in both teaching and mentoring. And we believe the students come first and creativity happens outside the lines. Listed our RUMCADs disciplines to earn a bachelor's of fine art degree. And there is one bachelor's of art degree in music production. One accrediting body that holds us to a high degree of accountability and standards of academic excellence is the National Association of School of Art and Design, or NASAD. And you'll see the other accreditations such as the Council of Interior Design Association and Colorado Department of Education for the two licensure programs. Are you a storyteller? Because lots of storytelling goes on around here, both virtually like in game art design, developing characters and environments, but then also in real life applications like in interior design and from the garments we wear in fashion design. Similar, similarly, graphic designers help promote the concept with the ability to develop logos, brand identity, UX and UI design. You can begin to share your story with us during an admissions interview, which would be the first step, and we will tell you our story. You'll get to know the REMCAD program that interests you, learn more about your housing options, our small class sizes and financial services are introduced to you in the admissions interview. If it is a good fit, we will go on to the portfolio submission and other requirements would be explained. A successful REMCAD alumni who works for Adobe Creative Suites out in California now, it's featured here, quoted on the importance of focusing on the portfolio. So keep in mind, portfolios continue to evolve with you. Many of you probably already have artwork you've started to create. So you'll be making many more in your creative career and REMCAD students have the, an annual portfolio reviews to keep them on track. So this grad story is one of many and you could find other alumni stories showcased on REMCAD.edu. You'll see they have landed positions at companies like Google, ESPN, Pixar, Disney, Microsoft, just to name a few and it all started with an admissions portfolio. If the portfolio makes you a little nervous and you would like some more resources, I am running a virtual portfolio prep session April 19th. Go ahead and scan this QR code that will bring you to the Eventbrite registration page. I'll put that uh, in the chat as well. Um, but basically it covers the fan arts, do's and don'ts, copyright, includes ways to document your work without renting photography equipment, so you could do it with your smartphone. 
And then some of you might have access to these programs, but know that it would be included in your tuition, which would be a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud and other industry standard tools. Um, let's not leave out the lifetime remcad.edu email address for online discounts. And then if you take a closer look at some of the resources, the Learning Commons is a hub of academic support. You're like family here. So if you run low on food or need an art supply, the man has your, the mine has your back. It's student run. And then student services are experts taking the stress out of schedules and payments. And our online learning management system provides fingertips, your classroom at your fingertips. The tech bar is your, for your technology support needs. And at Spectrum, you can find art supplies, branded sweatshirts, and software login information. Furthermore, career and alumni services are helping our students and alumni have um, providing exclusive job boards, which includes internships, professional development workshops, videos, and career advising, all geared towards assisting the individual to find the job of their dreams. And once you attend REMCAD, you are a lifelong learner with us. And so with the REMCAD Renew program, it will allow our alumni to take classes in their degree at no cost to keep up with the ever-changing industries. So as Octavia Butler said, the only lasting truth is change. And the art industry is definitely one that keeps changing. And you keep changing too. So additionally, counseling services are available to all of our students, confidential, personalized, and free of charge. And then our student accessibility services are working towards accommodating all learners, equal access and participation. The integral values of DEI guide REMCAD's academic and institutional development, serving our mission serving as our mission to prepare our learners to be forces of change in their industries, communities, and the world. And REMCAD tuition is about 22K per year, depending on the modality. Some scholarships can be found on remcad.edu, and we will consider external scholarships. If you would like to speak to an admissions counselor sooner than later, scan this QR code, or you could run to remcad.edu and fill out an application and know that we do have a daily tours and an open house on June 4th. And I have one more slide and we'll wrap up here. And this is some of my contact information. I'll put this in the chat as well. So I hope that you continue to pursue your creativity. It is the brave choice. We need more artists, teachers, and healers out there. Hope you consider an education with the Premier Art and Design College in Colorado. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And I'd just like to remind all of our attendees to feel free to submit some questions through the Q&A button. Um, all of the presenters will be here until the end of the evening. So feel free to make use of that Q&A. And uh, next up, we have California Lutheran University. Okay, so let me just pull this up. Okay. Um, sorry, I don't know why it's not working. Okay, are you able to see that now? Hopefully so. Yep, looks great. Perfect. Thank you so much. So hi, everyone. I'm Ali Hernandez. I'm an admission counselor from California Lutheran University. We are located in Thousand Oaks, California, which is in SoCal. We are about 40 minutes from Los Angeles and 40 minutes from Santa Barbara. So right in the middle of those two, we're located in a um, kind of suburban town more so. Um, so that's really um, nice location and it's just really great to be able to be surrounded by those cities. We are a pretty um, mid-sized university with 2,800 students, average class size ranging from 16 to 18 students. So you really get that one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one attention with your professors. We have 41 faiths um, represented on our campus. So we are a Lutheran university. However, you do not have to be Lutheran to attend our campus. Um, so you can kind of um, 
choose how religious you would like your experience to be. So that's something that I always like to tell our students. Um, we also are a Hispanic serving institution as well, which is very important to us. So diversity and inclusivity um, is very important to Cal Lutheran. Um, a Hispanic serving institution for any institution that has this de designation means that this amount of students on a college campus that identify as Latinx is at least 25%. On our campus, we're sitting at about 33% of students who identify as Latinx. We have 41 majors and 43 minors. These are some of our most popular majors that are listed here. However, we do have art as a major, multimedia that includes um, concentrations in graphic design, animation. So that's really interesting. I see a lot of students really get interested in that. And something to note is that we actually don't have any impacted programs on our campus. So you do not have to worry about um, getting into the particular major you want. We also have what's called the four to finish guarantee which guarantees your graduation in four years. And if for some reason you're not able to receive that, then um, Cal Lutheran will actually pay for the additional time it takes to finish your degree. We have a variety of academic support services. Our faculty advisors are just so great. We have student support services. So if you ever need anything, you can go there and get the help that you need. Disability support services as well. So if you need any accommodations, you can contact them. Our writing center and our math center are free for our students. So if you're having troubles in your classes, you're able to get um, go there and get the help that you need. We have various study abroad programs in over 80 countries, and we actually have around 30 programs that you can use your financial aid package for. So a lot of students tend to not wanna seek study abroad because they're nervous that it may cost a lot of money, but around 30 of our programs, you actually do not have to pay anything additional than it would be to actually take classes on campus. We also have over 500 internships that students have participated in last year. So we're hoping that students can intern um, in more internships um, off campus, on campus, anywhere like that in the future as well. The hub is kind of the place where you're able to see the different events that occur on campus. So we have a calendar on our website. We have um, homecoming festivities that students love to participate in. We have an event called Let It Snow, where we actually bring snow to our campus and students can kind of de-stress um, around final season, which is really nice because we never get snow in Southern California. Um, we have over 100 clubs and organizations, so hopefully you're able to find something that interests you. We have state-of-the-art facilities. Our William Rowland Art Center is so great. Students are actually able to showcase their own art here. I actually have a friend that was showcasing about four pieces of her own art. Um, she kind of goes there, puts it up, and it's just really great. So if that's something that you're interested in and you want to showcase your talent, we have a space for you to be able to do that as well. We also have our brand new Swenson Science Center that just opened up back in 2020 beautiful three-story building as you see in the photo. And this is actually the first year that students were able to utilize that space. Here at Cal Lutheran, we actually don't have the typical shoebox dorms that you may think of. We have suites for our students. So we have 15 co-ed residence halls, um, air conditioned, fully air conditioned. You don't have to share a communal bathroom. Um, you either get um, your room with your suite mates and then a bathroom or a Jack and Jill style where you share one bathroom with another room. We also have different dining commons on campus. We have our Ullman Commons, The Habit, Starbucks, and Jamba Juice. And you can actually utilize your meal plan at any one of those spaces. Here at Cal Lutheran, we're Division Three. We have 22 Division Three sports on campus, including our baseball and women's volleyball team that actually just won their championships in the past few years. So if that's something you're interested, you, you could be a part of that. As far as application requirements go, we are Common App exclusive. So you have to submit the Common Application in order to um, apply to Cal Lutheran. We do require official transcripts for students, but we are fully test optional. So if you don't want to take the SAT or ACT, or you're just really not confident in your scores, you do not have to submit those. Um, so that is an option that you have. We also require a letter of recommendation as well. So if you're interested in applying, we are still um, accepting applications. And I just wanted to touch on one more thing. So we actually have our VAPA scholarships for students, visual and performing arts. 
So if you're interested in potentially getting a scholarship for your talent, you can apply for this and hopefully you'll be able to get something. But we do have a lot of great information about that scholarship on our website as well. So that pretty much sums it up. I will actually go ahead and put my email down in the chat. So if you are um, wondering um, any questions or anything, just email me. I'd be happy to help you in any way. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, we have the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Okay, let me just share my screen here. Okay, can you guys see that fine? Yep. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's see. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Bridget, I'm an admission counselor here in the Office of Admissions at UNLV. I'm actually taking over for a colleague talking about the College of Fine Arts and then also talking about um, some of the admissions requirements for UNLV afterwards as well. Um, so the College of Fine Arts is a creative nexus anchored within the vibrant and diverse culture of Las Vegas. Um, it boldly launches visionaries who transform the global community through collaboration, scholarship, and innovation. Uh, luckily for our College of Fine Arts. We are located in the heart of Las Vegas, entertainment capital of the world. So it's really caters to our backyard being the Las Vegas Strip and a lot of students getting involved, um, think different things and events going on on our Las Vegas Strip. Um, so just to talk about some of the colleges and schools that are part of um, um, our College of Fine Arts, the first one being our School of Architecture. And we just have some photos here just to give a glimpse of what some students do. Very hands-on and a little fun fact is that one of our architecture students actually designed one of our hospitality buildings back in 2014. So just a way for students just to get involved in different things around campus, different projects going on as well. And then our another department is our department of art. Um, again, very hands-on and they have we have these little spaces here on campus where students are able to um, display their artwork and have their own exhibits and have a walkthrough um, for guests to come onto campus and to look at some of the art pieces that they have created. Um, our pretty well known area, our Marjorie Berg Museum of Art. I was actually here today walking through an exhibit about the Mojave Desert. So really cool area to explore and there's always something going on in this area as well. Another department, our department of dance. So our department of dance strives to train world-class dancers who meet the growing needs of the entertainment capital of the world. Um, our entertainment um, industry is always changing. So this department here in, within UNLV is always trying to adapt to those changes. And there's so much going on, so many events that a lot of our students partake in as well. Our entertainment engineering design is actually one of our most unique programs that we offer under the College of Arts. Um, it combines arts along with engineering. And so if you've seen shows with moving components, moving stage components, that's um, what students are able to work with. Um, again, catering to our backyard and getting involved in different opportunities to work with those moving components with stages. Um, let's see, yeah, so here are just some photos of students doing different things within this area. And then our department of film. So our department of film offers students the exciting opportunity to study film in the heart of Las Vegas. Um, it's uh, the efforts of this department to UNLV status as a premier metropolitan research university. Um, by adapting traditional film education values to meet the needs of individuals, communities, and industries in the 21st century. So again, these are just some photos that we have here of students um, working on different film projects. And lastly, oh, I don't think this is lastly, we have our School of Music. So our School of Music, um, it offers students opportunities for musical study in a professional artistic environment that strives to promote the highest level of artistic development according to each student's unique strengths. So as you can see here, just more photos of students partaking in different events, going around campus, going, um, going on around Las Vegas as well. One of our theaters here, very nice facilities. 
and our Department of Theater. So our Department of Theater offers programs in performance production and technology taught by experienced faculty while taking advantage of the entertainment richment of Las Vegas. I'm sorry, richness of Las Vegas. So again, just photos of different shows that students um, participate in within this department. And just to backtrack and go over some, let's see. Some requirements for UNLV, um, what, what, how can I become part of the College of Fine Arts? So for freshman admissions, we look at 13 core academic units. Um, students don't have to submit all four options that are listed below right here. They would only have to meet one to become admissible to UNLV. So the first one is gonna be a 3.0 weighted core GPA. This is according to 13 core academic units. Um, that's four years of English, three years of math, three years of social science, three years of natural science. Um, and if they don't have that, that's an, they can give us an 1120 on the SAT. If they don't have that, they can give us a 22 on the ACT. Or if they don't have that, they can give us um, an advanced diploma as well. And at the bottom, you see that we are ACT, SAT um, optional. That means if you do have a 3.0 core weighted GPA, you don't have to submit test scores. However, we always encourage that students do um, because those will be used for placement in their um, class area. And if you are a transfer student, all we ask for is a 2.5 GPA and 24 transferable college credits. If transfer students do not meet that criteria, then we, able, we are able to um, make them admissible based on those first year requirements. And that's about it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, if you wouldn't mind ending your screen share, everybody else can um, pop their cameras on because I think we have time for one discussion question. And uh, we'll just go in order of uh, how everybody presented, but our question for you is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your arts programs? And we'll start with Western Colorado University. Uh, one thing I would say uh, just to remember of, of our art program is that it's very, very hands-on. I mean, you do get a build a personal relationship with your professors, but I know that the community and the campus has a really good working relationship and uh, the art, art galleries in the community do work a lot with the students on our campus. So very hands-on, very personalized education, I would say. In kind of a similar sentiment, I would say if um, you are a parent or a student, who is interested in investigating St. Mary's College. Um, and of course, this is coming from someone who used to be a student here, but I would say for all of our arts programs, we are very holistic and very nurturing. So if you are a student um, who puts a lot of kind of undue pressure on yourself to perform at your highest at all given times, just know that your professors are here to support you. And it's natural to make mistakes or to make missteps or sometimes you will produce work that you're like, eh, I'm not sure if that's my favorite, but please know that at all of our universities here, I'm sure we have very supportive faculty and staff that we want to work with students. And I hope that you all are able to find a college that you love out of all the lists that presented today. Um, I'd have to agree at Colorado State University Pueblo, just like at Western and St. Mary's. I think we do a really good job of giving different opportunities and resources for all of our students. Um, the hands-on experience as well, working with the community, like I said in the, in the presentation, working with nonprofits and small businesses. I think it's really awesome. And just note that um, our arts department, we did just join our comms department as well. So they're kind of taking on more of a creative um, media type of take as well. And I think that's really prominent with where we're at with like different social media stuff, so. And at Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design is where art hearts become future art stars. And I wanted to mention that we are rolling admissions with multiple start dates, even through the summer because artists don't stop creating in the summer, so. Um, you can too. And if you're a senior, it wouldn't be too late to apply for fall 2022. Um, 
at Cal Lutheran, it's it's really great because we're in such a great location. So that's something that I always like to highlight to our students. Um, our students are able to intern in areas like Los Angeles. So they have plenty of opportunities to intern with Disney, um, just different internship opportunities on campus, which I think is really nice, especially for our art students as well. Um, we have our black box theater and they kind of put on like 10 minute plays. So I think that that's really cool that students can be a part of. And even if you don't major in it, um, you could still do those plays and by taking some of those classes. So it's really nice and you could take those classes for GEs as well. And for the University of Las Vegas, I would say that the College of Fine Arts, it's very adaptive and it's very um, ever changing to the changes that are going on in the world and the city of Las Vegas, especially because this city is, it's changing so much and there's new things popping up every single day and every single year going on in the city. So I would say that the College of Fine Arts does a really good job of adapting to those changes, changes. and then also to have the opportunity to um, meet world-class performers here at this college because obviously Las Vegas, we get um, some of the world's best entertainers coming through and those who work in the arts, who work in music and production always coming through this university. So I think that's a really great opportunity for students in the College of Fine Arts to take advantage of um, and to just gain experience and knowledge from those um, people who are working on a really higher tier. So I think that's a really good um, opportunity for students who are part of this College of Fine Arts at UNLV. Great, well, thank you so much to all of our wonderful presenters. Thank you so much to our attendees. Um, just a couple of um, reminders as we wrap up is when you close this window, there will be a five question quick survey to fill out. If you give us some feedback on the survey, we would really appreciate it. Um, also, please check the schedule at strivescan.com slash launch. Like I said at the beginning, there is tons of great stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks and through May. So. Um, definitely check that out. You can also view recordings of past events if there are any that you couldn't make it to. Um, so definitely check it out and we hope to see you at a future event. Have a wonderful rest of your evening.